What have you learned from Steve's life and work? Uh, <clears throat> well, he's certainly someone I've, I've admired. Um, well, I, I did try to talk to him once at a party, and he was super rude to me. My camera's not turning on. What's that? I did slide it and let go. It's not turning on. Here. OK. We'll let an expert see if he can turn it on. Uh, <laughs> but I don't think it was me. I think it was sort of, you know, pop the think, course. I think you weren't the first. Yeah, not the first, no. It was, um, but, but uh, yeah, and I was actually there with, like, Larry Page is an old friend of mine. I've known Larry since before he got venture funding for Google. And Larry was the guy that introduced me to Steve Jobs. So it's not as like I'm, I'm going, like, and tugging on his coat, like, you know, please talk to me. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so I was introduced by Larry Page. It's not bad, so. Um, but, uh, I mean, he obviously was an incredible guy and, and made fantastic products uh, that, that um, you know, and, and I don't know, there was like a, a certain, um, the guy had a certain magic about him, you know, just sort of, that was kind of, that was really inspiring. So, I, I mean, I think that's, that's really great. Is there, a, is there that magic that you try and emulate? Uh, no, I, I think uh, Steve Jobs is way cooler than, than I am, so. <laughs> yes. Mr. Jobs. You're a bright and influential man. Here it comes. <laughs> it's sad and clear that on several counts you've discussed, you don't know what you're talking about. I would like, for example, for you to express in clear terms how, say, Java, in any of its incarnations, addresses the ideas embodied in OpenDoc. And when you're finished with that, perhaps you could tell us what you personally have been doing for the last seven years. Uh, you know, you can please some of the people some of the time, but one of the hardest things when you're trying to affect change is that people like this gentleman are right in some areas. I'm sure that there are some things OpenDoc does, probably even more that I'm not familiar with, that nothing else out there does. And I'm sure that you can make some demos, maybe a small commercial app that demonstrates those things. The hardest thing is, what, how does that fit in to a cohesive, larger vision that's going to allow you to sell um, $8 billion, $10 billion a product a year. And one of the things I've always found is that you've got to start with the customer experience and work backwards to the technology. You can't start with the technology and try to figure out where you're going to try to sell it. And I've made this mistake probably more than anybody else in this room. And I've got the scar tissue to prove it. And I know that it's the case. And as we have tried to come up with a strategy and a vision for Apple, um, it started with what incredible benefits can we give to the customer? Where can we take the customer? Not not starting with, let's sit down with the engineers and, and figure out what awesome technology we have and then how are we going to market that. Um, and I think that's the right path to take. Uh, I remember with the laser writer, we built the world's first small laser printers, you know. And there was awesome technology in that box. We had the first Canon laser printing, cheap laser printing engine in the world in the United States here at Apple. We had a very wonderful printer controller that we designed. We had Adobe's PostScript software in there. We had Apple Talk in there. Just awesome technology in the box. And I remember seeing the first uh, printout come out of it and just picking it up and looking at it and thinking, you know, we can sell this you don't have to know anything about what's in that box. All we have to do is hold this up and go, do you want this? 
And if you can remember back to 1984 before laser printers, it was pretty startling to see that. People went, whoa, yes. And that's, that's where Apple's got to get back to. And, you know, I'm sorry that open docs a casualty along the way. And I readily admit there are many things in life that I don't have the faintest idea what I'm talking about. So I apologize for that, too. But there's a whole lot of people working super, super hard right now at Apple. You know, Avi, John, Garino, Fred. I mean, the whole team is working, burning the midnight oil, trying to, and, and, and people, you know, hundreds of people below them, to execute uh, on some of these things, and they're, they're doing their best. And I think that what we need to do, and some mistakes will be made, by the way. Some mistakes will be made along the way. That's good, because at least some decisions are being made along the way. And we'll find the mistakes, we'll fix them. And I think what we need to do is support that team going through this very important stage as they work their butts off. They're all getting calls, being offered three times as much money to go do this, do that, the valley's hot. None of them are leaving. And I think we need to support them and see them through this and write some damn good applications uh, to support Apple out in the market. That's my own point of view. Mistakes we made. Some people will be pissed off. Some people will not know what they're talking about. But it's, I think it is so much better than where things were not very long ago. And I think we're going to get there. So I think we've got time for just... My camera's not turning on. What's that? I did slide it and let go. It's not turning on. Here. OK. We'll let an expert see if he can turn it on. Our networks in here are always unpredictable, so they're a little... I have no idea what we're going to find. They are slow today. You know, you could help me out if you're on Wi-Fi, if you could just get off. <laughs> I'd appreciate it. Uh, we're having a little problem here. We figured out why uh, my demo crashed. Because there are 570 Wi-Fi base stations operating in this room. OK? We can't deal with that. So we have two choices. Either I've got some more demos that are really great that I'd like to show you. So we either turn off all the stuff and see the demos, or we give up and I don't show you the demos. Would you like to see the demos or not? Yeah. OK. So here's the deal. Let's turn up the lights in the hall. Several hundred of these are these MiFi things, too, by the way. So all you bloggers need to turn off your base stations, turn off your Wi-Fi. Every notebook, I'd like them to put, put them down on the floor. And all of you look around, I'd like you to police each other. <laughs> if you want to see the demos, shut all your laptops, turn off all these MiFi base stations, and put them on the floor, please. Come on, look around you. I mean, I'm, I'm not, you know, I think bloggers have a right to blog, but if we want to see the demos, we're not going to be able to do it unless we turn off all these MiFi base stations and laptops, set them on the floor. I've got time. <laughs> I really want your Wi-Fi devices off. Are they off? <laughs> Please turn them off if you've turned them back on. We're, we're making mistakes. We're fixing them as fast as we can. And um, what happens sometimes, though, is that some people uh, lie. Some people used unpublished APIs, and their apps get rejected. Some people submit an app that they says do, say does one thing but really does something else. They try to hide it from us. They get very clever about that. They try to hide it from us, and we find it, and we reject it, and they run to the press, and they tell the press the story about oppression, uh, and it gets written up, and they get their 15 minutes of fame because they hope it will convince us to, to change our minds, which it never does, but they keep trying to do that. And it's unfortunate, but we take it in the chin, and that's part of what we do, and we don't run to the press and go, this guy's a son of a bitch liar. Uh, 
And we went through the roof about this. So we said, no, we're not going to allow this. This is violating our privacy policies, and it's pissing us off that they're publishing data about our new products. And you guys have to stop making me blind, or I'm going to fall off the stage here like Bob Dole. <laughs> Thank you. Guys, could I ask you to stop using the flashes for a little while? That'd be great. I, I can hardly see anymore. Thanks. You know, I, I, I can't see when you do that. <laughs> Thanks. So maybe later, could we do some more? That really helped me. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. You know, I could hear a lot of phones beeping. So could we just take a minute? Maybe everybody could flip the silencer on their phones. Thank you.